Hello everyone, today is January 27th, 2019. It is about 46 degrees Fahrenheit at about quarter to five. And today I'll be doing a walkthrough of the neighborhood of Willits Point in Queens. And right now I'm at the intersection of Willits Point Boulevard and Roosevelt Avenue. To the left of me <coughs> is the number seven train which runs to Flushing and also towards Manhattan and out there in the distance is City Field the home of the New York Mets so I'm about to go walk on Willits Point Boulevard now this area is called Willits Point because back in 1867 there was a family called the Willits family which purchased land in this area and over time this land really fell into major misuse by the end of world war ii this area was known as an auto junkyard or a scrapyard and this neighborhood is known for having no sidewalks and no sewers so flooding is a problem here as you see right now a lot of trucks here with municipal waste the city doesn't really maintain this neighborhood's infrastructure at all. I believe there was a dispute between the auto junkyards and the city. So as a result of that um, argument, the city never maintained the streets or did anything for the neighborhood here. So you can see it still is pretty much a junkyard. There's like dirt and rubble everywhere, garbage on the side. I want to make sure I don't want to step in any puddles. There have been many plans to redevelop this neighborhood into something. Back when the World's Fair was in play in 1964, the master uh, urban designer Robert Moses wanted to incorporate this neighborhood into the a uh, park of Flushing Meadows Park but it was never successful because the uh, neighborhood here they hired Mario Cuomo as their lawyer and attorney so that never materialized but there have been plans to develop this neighborhood into like a shopping mall or um, put the Olympic Stadium here back when New York City was um, a contender for a contender for one of the cities to host the Olympics and it really is a shame because they should do something about this area leaving it like this is really really upsetting nobody really lives in this neighborhood I believe when I looked up um, some facts on this neighborhood in 2011 there was only a population of 10. Most people here they just make their livelihoods here with auto repair shops and uh, scrap yards. It isn't really a place you'd want to stay in. I mean it's good, it's good that I'm able to get some part of the neighborhood before it disappears. You see everybody here is a hard working person and it is a nightmare trying to walk around here though with all the water around and rocks and pebbles and whoever knows what kind of auto automotive stuff is around. Here's a cat, some loose bricks, some mud. I think this is the first business I've seen that's not related to automobiles or vehicles. It's a deli restaurant, breakfast and lunch. Kind of interesting because there's no uh, sewer system here. From what I've read, I wonder how they deal with that. 
I did hear that um, the plans for the shopping mall back a few years ago was opposed by the residents, but the city council did approve that the plans to go forward. However, oh my gosh, it's all mud here. So they approved the plans to go forward, but um, there was a court for New York State that ruled that it can't proceed. So those plans ultimately fell through. This is really one of the most unique neighborhoods in New York City. Not many neighborhoods you'll see uh, run down streets like this and potholes all over the place and auto repair shops everywhere. I did hear a lot of um, businesses here relocated to the Hunts Point section of the Bronx where there, there are more uh, auto repair places and everything. At least here there's not as much mud and water all over the place but now this neighborhood is right next to the flushing creek which is to the right of me it separates the neighborhood of Flushing from the neighborhood of Willits Point and Corona. Willits Point is a part of the greater Corona area. Here's some interesting uh, graffiti here. Looks like Pac-Man or something. I'm not even sure if the street lights work here because I don't even see bulbs on the uh, street lamps and the sun is going down so I do wonder how the lighting works around in this neighborhood. <clears throat> it doesn't feel like I'm in New York City here. It feels like I'm in, I don't know, middle of the Midwest or another country but whatever redevelopment plan that the city does um, do with this neighborhood they should keep in account the people's livelihoods here and make sure they're well taken care of they can't just say hey everyone's got to pack up and move because there are people here who rely on these this industry here in this neighborhood to survive and it's not right for the city to just seize all the property and move everything along. That's why this area has been so highly contested throughout the years. Because there was, was no plan to, uh, for the community to, uh, to uh, move on or make their livelihood somewhere else. And I applaud the neighborhood for doing so. However, the city was successful in getting some of the uh, development going with um, the construction of the City Field Stadium and the Shea Stadium, which used uh, the Shea Stadium used to be the former home of the New York Mets before it was replaced by City Field. And City Field actually took some of the land from Willis Point. So. Now I'm on 34th Avenue. Looks like there is a sidewalk here. But the roads here are still badly, badly maintained. There is a little bit of wind today, but it's not too, too bad.
I'm sure when people think of New York City, they don't think of auto junkyards and scrap yards and roads that look like this. And this trail looks pretty beaten up. Waste transfer stations and garbage all over the place. I do feel bad for the people who are here and the city can't even maintain basic services here like um, the road repaving and the utilities. Now, there's a stray cat up there. I'm not even sure if it's a stray. But as far as crime goes in this area, I actually feel pretty safe in this neighborhood because um, I don't think there are too many criminals who want to stay here. Everybody here knows each other. It's a small community. And uh, then again, who would be crazy enough here to walk around and worry about getting mugged or um, getting murdered? Everyone's out here to make a living and this isn't exactly a place for tourists to come. So I wouldn't have to worry about that. Well, here's some interesting street art on Blas Auto Glass. I do remember one time I ventured into this neighborhood without knowing what it was, and I was like, what in the world is this? It's like rose not badly maintained potholes everywhere and this was on my bicycle i made a wrong turn and i eventually had to find my way through uh willis point to get to roseville avenue so as you can see everyone here has to make their living and throw out their waste i'm assuming because the city doesn't collect the refuse here that private companies have to come by this area is flooded and the last time it rained wasn't since uh, i believe last wednesday or tuesday something like that and today is sunday The next time you come to New York, take a visit out to Willis Point if you're feeling really, really adventurous. You won't find another neighborhood like it, I guarantee you that. It's an auto and gla gas place, glass place, mufflers, tune-up shocks. If you need auto supplies or auto repair places, this is the place to go, Willits Point. This street doesn't even have a sign for what kind of street it is. Right now I'm wake, making my way back to Willits Point Boulevard. <laughs> you can't drive too fast here because it's such a bad area of roads. Your shocks will just get destroyed like it's nothing. That van's even having trouble maintaining 
the speed he's at. And I'm sure by the time I get out of here, I need to really rub my feet and get rid of all this mud too. Wow, this is really, really muddy. I almost slid and fell into it. So, I wish I wore my boots when I got in here, but I didn't think it would be this flooded. It's good to know there's a sense of community here, despite how uh, poor the conditions are. All right, take the picture with you. So as we're leaving Willis Point, remember that you can't deny the community spirit here and the government can't just take what they think is theirs and develop it for their own interests without consulting the minds of the people. There has to be a given, um, give and go, you know? So I think I'll head down this street because that area of Willits Point Boulevard is pretty muddy. <clears throat> Actually, I do wonder this. If your car is beat up and you need supplies, is it even worth driving to Willits Point and having your car uh, wrecked even more just driving on these streets? I mean, think about it. What if your car gets flooded or you get stuck in the ditch and like your underside needs repairing because you drove out here? Look at this, there's just garbage, garbage piled up here. There's a lot of stuff not even related to auto supplies here. I see buckets, I see wagons and paint cans. It really is a contrast between City Field and Willis Point and they're just a block away from each other. I mean, look at this. You have here um, a deli here and nice architecture and a billion, billions and, no, I wouldn't say billions, but millions and millions dollar stadium on this side. And then you have Willis Point on the other side. And right now I am rubbing my feet, making sure all that mud is off and cement, because I do not want that stuck on my floor or anything. And here it is, City Field. And Willits Point. Well, that concludes my video of Willits Point, Queens. I hope you enjoyed it. Like this video, subscribe. Tell your friends, tell your family. And I'll see you all next time. Take care.